What helps a kid like me solve a mystery? What else? This gun in my hand! This episode is all about me, Billy Narrator, Boy Detective. I charge two bits a day plus expenses. I even have my own theme music. Want to hear it? Guns, 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 guns and ice cream. Guns, guns, guns and ice cream. Guns, guns and ice cream. Guns and ice cream. Ice cream, guns. Boy detectives fall into a rut just like grown-up detectives. We get the same kind of cases over and over. I don't mean following cheating spouses and taking pictures. My cases revolve around the same kid stuff all the time. Missing cats. Does Georgia like me? How can I get my parents to like Georgia even though she's black? Not much I can do about that last one. I'm a kid detective, not a miracle worker. Romance cases and missing cats are pretty easy, though. Your mom figured it's easier to tell you Mittens ran away than to tell you it got hit by a car. She buried it under the azaleas in your backyard. And the tried-and-true method for finding out if Georgia likes you is write her a note and ask her. Dear Georgia, I like you. Do you like me? Check one of the boxes below. Yes? No? Sincerely, Gus. They get hot under the collar when you expect payment for obvious advice like that, but I still earn my fee by facilitating the exchange of notes, because they're too shy to do it themselves. The other thing they hire me for is to solve the mystery of where did dad and mom hide their guns? That's more fun, because we play hide-and-seek inside their house, and I get to explore. Once you find the French postcards or skin mags, you probably found the gun, because their parents think it's a reliable hiding place. Occasionally they hide the ammo somewhere else, or I might have to pick a lock on an old suitcase, but I haven't come up empty yet. One time Libby Biederman tried to stiff me on my two bits. My ma wouldn't lie to me about Beatrice running away. And anyway, we don't have any azaleas. Look, your mom is nice and everything, but she's no green thumb. You got daylilies growing all along your back fence. Those things grow like weeds. All you have to do is not mow them down and they'll keep spreading even if you ignore them except for that patch right there where they're drooping and turning brown. Those ones got dug up and not put back very carefully. That's where you'll find your cat. You're making it up. I'm not paying. So I had to prove it by borrowing a shovel off Ralph Delacorte and exhuming the kitty. When she was done crying, Libby coughed up five nickels. But something kept nagging at me. The patch of drooping lilies was four feet long by two feet wide. Why did her mom have to move such a big section of them to bury a regular-sized cat? I dug deeper until I found another body curled up down there. A human body this time. Oh boy, my first murder mystery. Don't worry, it wasn't a kid that got murdered. It was a man about 30. He got stuck in the ground with his legs bent and his head hunched over. The killer probably didn't want to take the time and effort to dig a six-foot-long trench in somebody else's yard. And thankfully, they only dug three feet deep. Yeah, I was pretty sure Mrs. Biederman wasn't the killer. Mr. Biederman was always away on business trips for weeks at a time. Maybe he planted somebody there and made his getaway. Just when I was making some headway on the case, Libby's little brother had to come outside. Wherever I go, he's always trying to tag along. Plus, he's so zealous about cleaning his gun, he always smells like Hoppy's gun oil. Hi, Billy. Hi, Francis. What you doing? I'm trying to find out who this dead guy in your backyard is and who killed him. He's all dirty. Say, you want to go to the matinee? You said you wanted to see that new picture again. No, I got work to do. What was that movie called you was talking about? It's called Muggsy Balone. It's like gangsters, see? But they're played by kids talking all hard-boiled. They kill each other with pies in the face instead of guns. You know how sensitive grown-ups are about that stuff. Anyway, one of the gangster kids is off his rocker, so he goes to school with a full bakery cart and just pies the heck out of other students randomly. That was a scream, I tell ya. All these bodies in the hallways covered with lemon meringue. That sounds funny. But if you don't want to see a movie, let's you and me go shooting. We can line up some cans and knock them over. Or maybe we can shoot a squirrel. Don't forget, you're grounded, Francis. Aw, oh, gee, Libby. Has anybody drawn a picture of you with your big nose sticking over a fence? Because you're a real killjoy. That's Kilroy. Come on, Billy. I know you like playing guns. This is serious, Francis. I want to solve this mystery. There's a killer on the loose. 
I'll have to go all over town searching for clues. Then let me come with you. I want to be a war man. Oh, so you don't want to be a man. You want to be a woe man. You know what I'm trying to say. I want to be in law enforcement. I got my gun with me. It's a wifo. That's just a pellet gun. No, look, it's a wifo. Oh, yeah, I guess it is a real rifle. Be careful with that, Francis. I know how to use it, White. I'm a lawman. Did you ever earn your star to be a real lawman? Not yet. What do I got to do? You have to pass the test. As long as it's not social studies, I can pass it. All right. First thing you have to do is say, Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled peppers. Say that five times fast. No sweat. Peter Piper picked a peck. Picked a peck of pick. Peter Piper picked. I first already got started. Sorry, Francis. You better sit this one out. I'm going to keep practicing and I'll pass that test tomorrow. You do that. Until then, I got to sing us out to the commercial. Oh. Guns, 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 guns and ice cream. Guns, guns, guns and hot dogs. Guns, guns and bullfrogs. Guns and cousins playing with guns, 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 guns. guns. Hey, kids. If you liked tonight's episode, join the Billy Club. Just send a non-French postcard with your name, age, and address to The Billy Club, care of the Magnum Radio Network, Department 816, Parabellum City 7. And here's how you can get your very own gun. After you're approved as an official member of The Billy Club, visit your local Skelly Asbestos Supply Center. While your parents are shoveling asbestos into their pails for home installation, just ask the attendant for your official This Gun in My Hand pistol. Oh boy, this is neat. Wait a minute, this don't look like no gun. This is a rubber hand with the pointer finger stuck out. I can do that with my own hand. Nah, see, kid, you can do more with it than just a gun gesture. Thanks to the durable framework inside the rubbery hand, you can fold the fingers up or down into a fist, or a thumbs up, or that Hawaii gesture with the thumb and pinky out. I'm hanging loose. Oh yeah? <laughs> ah, jeez. This one don't work. I can move the thumb and the fingers on the sides, but this one's glued down to the palm. I'm way ahead of you, kid. How come the hand is blue? Is this some kind of science fiction message metaphorically promoting racial tolerance? No, they were made for a cliffhanger serial called Band of the Clutching Hand. The dumb clucks never thought to glue down that finger. Kids found out right away and parents were not pleased. I picked up seven gross of them on the cheap because they discontinued their promotion. I would have rather had a gun. It still fits with the name of the show. It's a hand. This gun in my hand. You should have used this commercial in that episode about the hand with the mind of its own. Ah, we already had Astral Police paid up to advertise on that episode. Would have been good, though. You're right. Guns, 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 guns. Bobby, Lyudmila, Georgia, you're probably wondering why I've gathered you all here. Obviously, you wanted to show off how you solved the mystery. You'll eliminate suspects one by one, and then you'll capture the killer. No, I mean why I've gathered you here, in the meeting room off the library. Mrs. Schiller said I would disrupt class if I did it in her room, so I had to move the proceedings here. I know why you wanted me here, because I'm your deputy. Thanks for helping me pass the deputy test, Billy. Just don't try the sheriff test yet, Francis. You're not ready for, I slit the sheet and the sheet slit me. Slitten was the sheet that was slit by me. I think we gotta go back. You need to act out the scenes where you found clues and investigated witnesses and suspects. No, I don't want one of those 25-minute long episodes like Falk does. Wrap it up in 10 minutes and leave him wanting more. First things first, you all need to know whose body we found. Billy, you don't have to pull your punches. I recognized him, but I didn't want to upset Libby. It was our dad. <gasps> I'm afraid so. I'm sorry for your loss, Francis. But Libby is not here. Is she not a suspect? No, she didn't do it. And she's not here because she's still crying after I told her about her dad. Call it instinct, but I can tell she's not faking it. You, on the other hand, Lyudmila, you lied to me. I have not. You said you hardly know the Biedermans, but you went to play hide-and-seek at her house three weeks ago. Only that one time, and I never went back. Libby invited me there to play hide-and-seek while we searched for her mother's cult peacemaker. And you found it. Mr. Biederman caught you two when you were loading it. He sent you home and told your parents, and you got a spanking. That's why you had the motive to kill Mr. Biederman. If I was going to kill anyone, it would be my own father for spanking me. And that's why I knew you didn't do it. That doesn't prove it. Then there's Bobby. 
You lied to me when I asked if you owned a gun. I don't own any guns. You're the biggest gun dealer on the playground. Right, but I don't get high on my own supply. They're just inventory to me. I never use them. I just sell them to other kids. Except you refuse to sell a revolver to Ralph Delacourt. That's right. He called me Skidmark all last year in Mrs. Jansen's class. That's not a good enough reason. If you refuse to sell a gun to somebody, you're leaving him unprotected. You're effectively taking away his right to bear arms, either for recreation or to overthrow tyrannical governments. I'm a private businessman. You can't make me do business with people I don't like. What you did was wrong, Bobby, but you're not the killer. Oh, great. Here it comes. Blame the black girl. Georgia, before we get to you, I'm supposed to let you know Gus likes you. Do you like him? Is he the one that shows everybody the wart in his armpit? Yes. Yes, I like him. Okay. You lied to me, too. I knew you were a friend of Libby's who played at her house every day after school. So? So you claimed you were playing hide-and-seek while looking for her parents' French postcards. Right. You were really looking for a place to stash your own French postcards when Mr. Biederman caught you. You had a motive to kill him, too, because you got in trouble. No, I don't, because he didn't do anything. He just sent me home and asked me not to bring them again. Because your French postcards had pictures of men on them instead of women. Mr. Biederman didn't know how to talk to you about it, so he confiscated them and let you go. I still don't like him very much, but I wouldn't kill him. I know you couldn't have done it, for the simple reason that the guy who wrote this doesn't want to depict black people as villains, or attempt any accent for them. Well, that's just a different kind of racism. Now wait! Black girls can be villains just like anybody else. Please don't feel that you have to prove your point by personally becoming a villain. Gosh, no. I'm gonna write stories with black girl superheroes and black girl villains, since nobody else wants to. That would be swell. Get in touch with my agent, Gary McIndor. He can help you get them on the air. Psh, I don't want radio. I'm going to be in pictures. Billy, there's nobody left. You ruled out everybody who's here. Not quite, Francis. Uh-oh. Francis, you had the means. Everyone knows you carry that gun around all the time. You had the opportunity because it happened at your house. The only problem is I'm not sure of your motive. You would have done it too if he tried to take your gun away. What? He grounded me for getting a D on my social studies test. First, he said no radio or movies or dessert for two weeks. But I don't care about those things. Then he tried to take my gun away. No. That's right. No hunting. No target practice. What if I had to defend myself from woke hoodlums or a corrupt government? Gosh, that really makes this case a tough call. On the one hand, you shot and killed your own father and buried him in your flower bed. On the other hand... He was trying to take your gun away. And if we tolerate gun grabbers, that will lead us down the path to tyranny. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I thought you were going to lie about it, but you confessed even before I mentioned the real proof. The grease stains on the corpse's pants smelled like Hoppy's gun oil. Ah, that wouldn't prove it. Everybody uses Hoppy's gun oil because it's endorsed by Hoppy himself. And by Gabby Hayes. So what are we doing here? Are you letting me go because you agree that my actions were just... Mmm, I'm afraid it's a step too far, Francis. When your dad took your gun, you should have just gotten another gun. It's not like they're hard to get. You can hardly play hopscotch in Parabellum City without tripping over them. We often use pistols to outline the squares in our hopscotch court. You could have bought another one off Bobby. No, he's too little. I wouldn't sell to him. See? That's why I had to do it. Francis, I know you're feeling angry right now, and you probably want to lash out. But don't hit me with that long tube that you're apparently using as a container for a rolled-up poster. Don't worry, Billy. Why would I hit you with a cardboard tube when I got this inside it? This is my wifeo. Don't do it, Francis. We've already had eight school shootings this week. In the tri-state area? In Petabellum City? In this school? I can't let you do this, Francis. Take cover, everyone. Bubby, you must get down further. But I don't want to miss out on the action. Ow! <laughs> it hurts! Ow, oh, Charlie, it hurts! Oh, Ow. I didn't hit you. I only shot the gun out of your hands. <laughs> yeah, but it hurts when the gun gets whipped out of your hand with the force of a bullet. Don't be such a baby, Francis. You're a big boy now. And they're going to try me as an adult. They try everyone as an adult now. Can I go back to narrating mode and leave the actual scene behind? Good. Listeners can rest easy knowing that if this situation came up in real life, 
A good boy with a gun would be there to stop the bad boy with a gun. And we all lived happily ever after. Bang! 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 Guns, 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 guns and safety, guns, guns, guns and blood, hounds, guns, guns with live rounds, guns on playgrounds, we love guns, 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 guns. Don't kid a kidder, episode 113 of This Gun in My Hand was popped off by Rob Northrup. This episode and all others are available on YouTube with automatically generated closed captions of dialogue. Visit thisgunninmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, show notes, archives, and to buy Rob's books, such as Little Heist in the Big Woods and other revisionist atrocities. What's the best toy in the backyard or the schoolyard? This gun in my hand!